Right, Goodman Festival of Speed 2023. Here's something that we've never said on the Fully Charged Show. Let's talk Caterham. Makers of the purest, simplest, lightest driver's cars going. Of course, if your thing is lightness, going electric is really, really difficult because batteries at the moment are really quite heavy. So how on earth do you make an electric Caterham? What might that look like? Well, it might look something like this. This is the new Project V concept car and it is a, a fairly thought out imagining of what an electric Caterham sports car could look like in the coming years. What you're gonna notice as we go around this car is that A, despite breaking a lot of Caterham rules, like having a roof and seating for more than two and being electric, this is still at its core a true Caterham product. And, and more than that, it's not just a design study. There's been serious thinking put into this car and you do get the impression they might be going somewhere with this project. And the man to tell us more about that is this man over here, Mr. Bob Leishy, who's the CEO of Caterham. Hello, Bob. Hi, well, Zach, you all right? I'm very well. Yeah. I thank you for clearing your stand for me. This car was absolutely swarmed when we came in. Um, Project V, still very much a genuine Caterham, even though it looks quite different to the ones that we're used to. Well, we're about three things. Simplicity, fun to drive, lightweight, and this tries to embody all of those things in an EV. Um, we're you know, trying to achieve a number of 1190 kilos for this. Uh, with the three seat configuration, we can do that. And that is, I think, one of the lightest EVs on the market at the minute. There's certainly, there's not many sports cars either. So first things first, it's a beautiful design, Bob, and a little bit different looking to Caterhams that we're used to. Um, you've got a new head of design for this product. Was there a head of design at Caterham before? There wasn't, because the last one was Colin Chapman. And this is inspired by our boss, the CEO of VT Holdings, Takahashi Sun. And he set the overall direction based around one of his favorite cars, which is uh, the Lotus Elan, Mazda MX-5. And that was the inspiration for this. And we engaged with Anthony Giannarelli. And between all of us, this is the interpretation that we've, uh, we've delivered with the support of uh, Ital Design Manufacturing. Absolutely beautiful. And I would encourage anyone who hasn't seen a Giannarelli Design 1 to Google one of those because it is a work of art. He's been making pretty cars for a long yeah. time as Anthony. Yeah. Um, so lightness and also affordability have been really central to this design. Beginning at the front, you were telling me about the significance of not having a frunk or a fruit. Why is that a good idea in an electric Caterham? So it's a good idea in a Caterham because one of the most expensive things to develop, and we're a small company, we need to minimize our cost, is any aperture on the car. So doors, boot lids, trunk lids, they are very complex and expensive to develop. So by going in this direction, we have a beautiful structure at the front that looks amazing, but it means we don't have to do a lot of things. We don't need another aperture. We don't need to seal it. We don't need to put a hinge there. We don't need to put a latch there. And all of that saves between eight and 10 kilos. Another side effect of that is because there's nothing underneath there to put your overnight bag in or compromise the suspension layout, we can do what we want underneath. So we can put the biggest, best suspension and wishbones in that we need. We can put the steering rack in front of the steering, which is the best and recognized best place for for handling and that whole layout leads us to deliver that fun to drive best in class handling when we get to production what strikes me listening to you just then is that this is so much more than just a design concept this is something that you guys have really thought about at every stage even thought about how you might go about manufacturing it yeah we're, it's from the beginning and, and again you know I, I keep saying this we are a small manufacturer we can't afford the luxury of making a show car throwing it away, listening to public reaction, reacting to that, and then doing it again and again, and bringing something to the market four years from now. This is what we want to bring to market, and we've done as much of the engineering as we can from the beginning, and be true to what Caterham's DNA is. So Caterham's got a history of what I like to say is repurposing OEM technology, and minimizing cost for development, like the development of less apertures, one aperture that we have to have is to get in and out of the car. So if we have a look at the front of the side door, oh, that's um, what you're looking 
what you're looking at now is the door aperture from an Audi TT. So this all looks production quality yeah. because it is production quality. And in, we intend to use that same layout when we get to the serial production phase of this car. So, you know, the quality is there, but the real big benefit for us is we don't have to develop that aperture. The hinge, the latch, the closure is all been developed and in production for many years with Audi. And we can then take those part exactly like we've done with our current powertrain in the seven comes from a Ford engine, Mazda gearbox, BMW diff. This is exactly the same philosophy of repurposing those OEM quality already developed parts. These are the parts that people would absolutely never think of when considering the cost of developing a car, but every little helps, right? And, and as well as that, the first thing, you, when you open the door, the first impression you get of the quality of the vehicle is what oh, that, if the hinge is that shunky, you're stepping through. If, if it doesn't funk it's, properly, exactly. forget about it. And, and what you're looking at as you get into the car, it's a really important impression that it doesn't look like a kit car. It doesn't look like a kit car. It's pretty lovely in here. These seats look like they'd be very comfortable, but also very, very thin. Again, weight saving absolutely everywhere. Yeah, they're, they're from a production car as well. From where? Maserati. Oh, okay. Lovely seats. And then underneath, because again, this is not just a design model, we do have an idea of how big the battery would be, remind me. So we're aiming for around 55 kilowatt hours with the probably the next or next generation battery technology. The, the ground that everybody's fighting with batteries and the reason that you've seen a lot of SUVs start is because the holy grail is to get the thinnest battery that you can. About five years ago that was 150 mil, then 120 mil. Today the current state of the art is about 80 mil high. That's what this is laid out on um, and that will become more affordable by the time we get this into production and that allows us to put the batteries one battery is underneath the driver's feet, the other are behind the underneath the, the second row, and it allows us to package that into this very, very small element. What makes me really happy is that you haven't overdone it in terms of the amount of battery, the amount of power. I think a lot of brands are making the mistake of putting too much battery material in, giving more range than frankly most people are going to need, and as a result, affecting the performance and handling in a really negative way. Likewise, the power figure, I think, is in the mid-200s, Yeah, that right? that's right, about 260. Rear-wheel drive. Rear-wheel drive. What more do you need, right? It, exactly. In, in terms of the range, if you've got one of our more powerful 2-litre 7s, the range of that on the fuel tank that's in there is about 160 miles. This will easily exceed that. So we're no different to where we would be. And another interesting fact about this particular car, we've there's three driving modes. There's normal sport, which you know, everybody can understand what normal and sport is. But we're proposing to introduce a new driving mode called sprint. So a lot of our existing customers go for a quick blat on a Sunday morning. And in fact, you know, the owner's group forum is called Blat Chat. So they go for a quick blat, which is a sprint. So Sunday morning, quick sprint, maximum power, maximum output, yeah. tuned for acceleration and performance. Yeah. And we've got sprint mode. You've been very candid publicly about the fact that EVs in many ways are, you know, completely go against all the key values of Caterham and make your life quite difficult, what with this energy transition. Does this project sort of reassure you that Caterhams can still be Caterhams in the electric future? I, I think so. I mean, you know, weight's relative. You know, we just need to make the lightest weight fun to drive EVs. They may not be as pure as a Series 3 chassis 7 that's been around for more than 60 years, but it's still lightweight, fun to drive, and simplicity that's there. That's a really good point because we are getting a lot better at disguising weight, aren't we? There are some big two and a bit ton SUVs which are shockingly good to drive down twisty roads these days. So 1.1 tons, sort of hefty for a Caterham, but in the grand scheme of things, you can really do a lot with that, can't you? And you don't need those sophisticated technologies to keep it feeling like it's more about pure you know we're not aiming for a digital driving experience we want to keep that analog feel to the car as much as we can with an ev powertrain and that's a journey we're just starting you're going to build it absolutely right there's going to be a stampede if we don't open this stand up in a second but very quickly i have to do this front seat jack test i need to know i need to know if i fit 
in what is potentially my new dream car. Oh, oh yes. We well, could swing a cat in here. That is roomy and he's sitting basically on the floor. Bob just showed me a photo of the battery pack in this car and the, the short version is there's battery there, there's battery behind me and there's a big gap here so you can get your ass in really low down and sit low to the floor like you want to in a car like this. Oh, this is, this is phenomenal. To recap, 272 PS, four and a half second, not to 60 time, 250 miles WLTP range. Those are the numbers I want to hear from an electric sports car. But look, if you're looking at this and you're thinking, ah, oh, that's far too heavy and I don't like that it has a roof. Good news, Caterham's working on another EV. Now then, here's something a little bit more conventionally Caterham. This is the EV7 concept, and this one really is much more of a concept. It's an experiment, an attempt to answer a question that Caterham are curious about, which is, can you make an electric Caterham 7 with a weight delta of no more than having a passenger in the seat next to you? And this is their first stab at it, and it's looking quite good so far. It's got 240 brake horsepower, which is equivalent to some of the very spiciest ice-powered Caterham models. That may not sound like a lot, but it's enough for a 0 to 60 time of four seconds because the whole car weighs, wait for it, 700 kilos. 700 kilos, it's the lightest EV in the entire world. And you might think that's because they fitted it with a teeny weeny piddly battery, but not so. 52 kilowatt hour nominal, 40 kilowatt hour usable. Most of it's in the front there where the engine was, but it also runs all the way through this transmission tunnel. So really clever use of what little space that there is. And that also helps with weight distribution as well. Now, why so much redundancy in the battery? Well, that's all to do with how this thing is designed to be used, which is to say, it's designed to be blatted, to use Bob's word, around a racetrack for short bursts of time and then charged very, very quickly in between those bursts. So this battery is designed for really, really fast charging and discharging. Fascinating little project, just a concept for the time being, but it's so promising to see between this and the Project V that we're not just gonna have exciting, fun sports cars in the electric future, but lightweight ones. Rejoice.